Ladies, if you've put on some weight, do you know? Yes. yes. Yeah. If you've taken <laughs> off some weight, do you know? Yes. yes. So to ask your male partner, do you think I've put on weight or lost weight? Is that a fair question? Not fair. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it's a serious trap. And he doesn't know what to say. And if he tells you that you have, you will be quite cranky because you already know that you have. You don't really want him to tell you that you're a bit chubby. <coughs> and if you have lost weight and he tells you that you haven't, that's not a good situation either. So none of that works. Would that be fair? So if we could come up with a solution today that made sure you woke up every single morning for the rest of your life, excited, energetic, and enthusiastic about the whole day, would you be keen to hear? Now, what's happened, though, if you haven't heard about me before, is some people are going, yeah, but what pill is she going to try and sell us? What program is she going to try and sell us? What book? <laughs> what, I, what, I don't know what you just said. But that. <laughs> what is it? Because, you know, you go to stuff and people go at the end of it, they're going to try and sell me something. So I'm going to pre-frame you that everything I'm going to share with you is free. I've got nothing to sell you. And all I'm going to ask you to do is if you get a piece of information out of today that you think is pretty cool, that you share it with some other people in your life. That's it. How does that sound? Okay, so I've got five steps. And when I share them with school kids, we put them into a song and we dance them. And I want you to imagine this. I was at Palmerston North Boys High School, 1,749 boys between the age of 12 and 17. And they all sang this song with me at the top of their voices. So do you reckon you can beat that this morning? <laughs> From a no. testosterone level, probably yeah. not. <laughs> you can do it. Yes. So, here's what I'm going to ask you. When you woke up this morning, because you had to get up pretty early, yes? Yes. When your eyes flooded open, and it happens to us every morning, because we're all here. So for however many years we've been waking up, every morning our eyes are flooded open at some stage, yes? Sooner or later they will flutter open. There is a bee's willy of time. How long is that? How long is a bee's willy? <laughs> there is a bee's willy of time where a decision has to be made. Now, a lot of people say to me, this is my favourite thing people ever say to me, what drug are you on, woman? Every day somebody says that to me because I believe in being happy all of the time regardless. And there's a reason for that. And I'll just quickly share that with you. When I was 10, I was fat. I had pimples on my face and I had really buck teeth. You could put a 20 cent point between my two front teeth. Uh, when you're at school and you're fat, pimply, and got buck teeth, how are you going? Yeah. The blokes don't know you. <laughs> and I had a small chance. I was reasonably smart at school and I liked to wear my uniform really well in private school with my you know, bright socks and the tie and all that stuff. So I used to get bullied really badly. I came home from school one afternoon and my brother's sister said this to me beautifully. You ready? Rowie, you're fat. It was true. <coughs> See, sometimes you get upset by the truth, but it was actually the truth. Now, I've got, I'm full of common sense and logic, so when you're 10 and you're full of common sense and logic, what do you do? Someone says you're fat. Right. Yeah. Well, if I was emotional, I absolutely would have. But I went, hey, look at me, I am. My dad's a really good cook. So I started exercising. But at 10, I didn't know any better, and I'm 50 now, so that was a very long time ago. I did what I saw on television, so I did a fair bit of these on the floor, and I did some of these on the floor, and I did some of these on the floor. And I did those for three years, every day. Didn't lose any weight. I'm a committed girl though, and highly disciplined, so I gave it a good crack for three years. My father sent me to a private boarding school in Melbourne to become a lawyer. And it was a seven-day Adventist boarding school where you couldn't listen to rock music and you couldn't dance. I got suspended for listening to Elder John with that kind of a school. And we had a school sports day where there was free water coming out of the sky. Some people call that rain particularly on the Gold Coast. When the New Zealanders come here on holidays and there's free water coming out of the sky, have you heard them carry on? <laughs> well, I could get this rain at home. You know what I used to, I used to live on the Gold Coast? You know what I used to say to them? There's a flight leaving from Coolangatta in about half an hour. You can go. Because <laughs> free water out of the sky is good, yes or no? Just say yes. What if you changed your vocabulary? Because you'll hear a lot of people say, one of the things in Australia in particular, we talk about all the time is the weather. Have you heard us carry on about the weather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good 
Yeah, have we not got more interesting things to talk about than the weather? Have we not? And have we got any control over the weather? Like I'm a control freak, absolutely. But of the weather, it is what it is. Anyway, it's a free water day coming out of the sky at my school in Melbourne. Lots of those days. And we couldn't do outdoor sports, so we all had to come inside into a room much bigger than this one. There's 450 people in the room doing indoor sport. These two people walked into my school, and please picture this if you're a visual person, this is kind of cool. The guy was wearing, it was a guy and a girl, the guy was wearing a black light grey unitard. I'm not sure if I should share this with you. This is, this is a New Zealand expression. But on the South Island of New Zealand, they call lycra puffy skin. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a good expression. Anyway, so it's full black lycra. The lady's wearing full red lycra, black opposing headbanded socks for the two outfits, and white Reebok shoes, because back in the 80s, Reebok shoes were the only shoes to be wearing with exercise clothing. They walked into our school where you couldn't listen to rock music and you couldn't dance. The music went on and we started doing this. Now, to me, that was dancing to music at a school that you weren't allowed to do that. They called it exercise to music. <laughs> I'd been exercising on the floor for three years. And all of a sudden, I got this rush through my body. It was like, I fell in love that day. Remember that first time you fell in love, that first time in your life? Well, this wasn't with a bloke. This was with, this was with my new career partner. I knew that those people were getting paid to do that. And I couldn't believe that you could get paid to do something so cool. So I went to the principal of my school and I said, excuse me, Mr. Bartlett, do you remember a teacher, one teacher in your school that really believed in you, like made a difference? You might have been the cleaner, might have been the maintenance guy, might have been the front desk lady, but there was somebody at your school that looked you in the eye, smiled at you and said something to you that made you feel good about yourself at one stage. Well, I was really privileged. It was the principal of my school. So I went to him and I said, after the exercise class, I said, excuse me, sir, I would like to teach exercise to the whole school. I would like to do that. How much are you paying them? And he said, $30. I said, I'll do it for $25. In <laughs> <laughs> private boarding school, I don't think they needed to save any money. And he said, yes. And the only story I didn't tell you is that about two weeks before that, I don't know if you remember school very well, but at my school there was two girls that were the most gorgeous girls in the school. They were the most popular. They were in great shape, blonde hair. The boys loved them. They were gorgeous. They did a survey around my school, and the survey was this: If you like rowing, tick yes. And if you don't like rowing, tick no. And they said it around the whole school. And they came to me at the end of the day with this big pile of paper, 450 pieces of paper. <laughs> See, rowing, everybody hates you. Guess what I did that day? Right. I'm sharing this with you because life's going to throw stuff at you. I will share with you, however, that that day of my life was the most important, influential, amazing day of my life. And this morning I'm going to ask you to consider this. I believe there's two epic moments in your life and mine. You can argue with me because people say there's lots of different epic moments, but I think there's only two. Number one is the day you were born. Epic moment? If you don't think so, ask your mum. <laughs> You wouldn't be here if you weren't born, so it's a pretty important day. For me, the second most epic moment in your life is when you find out why. Why was I put on this planet? What is my purpose? And I found out I was 13 years of age. I knew at 13 that there was never going to be another fat, chubby, buck teeth girl on the planet that was ever going to feel bad about herself. I was going to make that different. I was going to get every fat, buck teeth, pimply faced little girl up off the floor and get her exercise into music, and that was going to be my life. I've got goosebumps telling you about it. So I said to the principal, let me do that. Now, I only had two small challenges, and we all have challenges in our life, yes? I only had two small ones, because he said, yes, we'll let you do it, and he's, we'll pay you $25, go. I didn't know how to teach exercise to music. <laughs> small challenge. <laughs> no one had taught me how to do that. But when you're really passionate about something, because people use that as an excuse all the time, don't they? I don't have the right education. I wasn't taught the right stuff. I'm not wealthy because I didn't learn how to create wealth. Libraries are free. Did you know that? How much is a library card in Australia? 
free. <laughs> every book available to all, every successful person on the planet's written a book, haven't they? And they're available to us for how much? Free. So I went to the library and started research. I was no Google. I had to look how do I exercise. I found a Jane Fonda video. <laughs> uh -huh. So I learnt. Second small challenge I had, just a small one, the whole school hated me. They had t told me on a piece of paper that they hated me. Can you imagine what it takes to stand up in front of 450 people who hate you and teach exercise? <laughs> I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> the word I was going to use was courage. <laughs> but I like kahunas better. And please notice, because this is predominantly female room, please notice that that comment came from a bloke. Yes. Because <laughs> I found out that day, I stood up in front of the club, in front of the whole school and I taught exercise. But I found out two really important things that day. I found out that guys did chicks that teach exercise. <laughs> but not for the, the reason they're thinking, it's the real reason. Men really appreciate courage. They seem to play the sports where courage is required. And now I live in New Zealand. If you talk to any All Black, they'll tell you most of them will throw up before the game or they're so nervous before the game that they're shaking and scared. Ever heard of an All Black not playing today because he's too scared? Because <laughs> courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Have you heard that before? Being scared to death and giving it a crack anyway. And that's all I'm asking you to do because so many people miss out on the exciting things in life because they're scared of what other people think of them. They're scared about what if I screw up. There was every chance on the planet I was going to screw up that day. Every chance. I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was that this was something I was really passionate about. So I got up in front of my class and I taught exercise and music. And at the end of the class, the, all the blokes clapped. The second thing I found out that day is the blokes don't like nasty women. Did you wear lycra? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> with my school, my eyes in blue, with my, uh, you know, we used great happy to, what do you call that? It's so so the house colours, mine was blue, so I wore my blue. <laughs> I found out that day that the two gorgeous girls that had flown around and done the survey, everybody ticked that for a reason. The blokes tick the boxes because they like the girls. That's a bit pathetic really, isn't it? Can't you think for yourself? And the girls tick the box, why? Yeah. These are two most popular girls in the school. They didn't know what else to do. That's a bit pathetic really, isn't it? So what happened to me between teaching exercise and that day, I went home and cried. But I asked myself this question, and I'll, I'll share this with you. I don't really care about winning. I'm not particularly inspired by winning. I bloody hate losing them. <laughs> <laughs> Do not. <laughs> and I looked at myself in the mirror that day. I'll never forget it. I was 13. It was the epic moment in my life. I looked at myself in the mirror that day and I said, this is ridiculous. Who is winning in this situation? It certainly isn't me. Here's pathetic me crying in front of the mirror. Where these two girls, they're trying to hurt me or make me happy. If I'm hurt and crying, who's won? And that happens to us all the time. There's so many people who will try and pull you down, steal your dream, tell you you can't do it. I'm in schools because I talk to kids now who are only 13 and 14 years of age and they've already been told you're too tall, too short, too fat, too skinny, too dumb, too, too from the wrong suburb, all of that stuff. I love telling people this. When I ran away from Melbourne private boarding school, I ran away to Campbelltown in Sydney. Very high socioeconomic area. <laughs> How many multi-millionaires have come out of Campbelltown? Not too many, and do you know why? Because when you live in Campbelltown, here's what people say to you. You can't be successful, you're from Campbelltown. <laughs> I've got a very high <laughs> My name, my birth name, is Rubina. <laughs> I have to share with you what happened. At my school, my last name is Cesarin, so I was Rubina, black current, Cesarin. <laughs> oh, Cesarin became Cesarean, and Cesarean became abortion. Oh. So I was the black current abortion at my school. <laughs> I hated my name until one day this thing came to mouth. None of you were even born, I'm sure. And there was a new suburb <laughs> on the Gold Coast being developed. 
<laughs> and they were selling land. It was completely open, empty space. Oh. And they were selling land. It was a brochure for a new suburb on the Gold Coast called? Oh. Robina. <laughs> That's my name. That's my passport. I took that. Just thought I'd share Because I love coming here now. <laughs> exactly the same. So cool. We have a patient whose first name and last name is Rabina. Rabina, Rabina. I have to meet her. No, I seriously have to meet her. Because I'm already booked in. I'm coming on the 26th of May to have my checkup, so I definitely want to meet that person. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. I taught aerobics. I left home because when I told my father that I was going to be, Dad, I'm not going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be aerobics. You have to deliver that information with a big smile on your face. My dad spoke seven languages. <coughs> it went a bit like this. Over my dead body, swear, swear, swear. Over my dead body, swear, swear, swear. I'm not advocating running away from home, but I did. I can't change that. And I think I'm the only person on the planet I've ever met who's never done anything else except from the day they realised what their epic moment was, the reason they were put on the planet. I've never done anything ever been involved in health and fitness. And I've given you that background because when I come to you and share with you that I've got five simple steps to keep you healthy and fit and strong for the rest of, the, of your life and it costs nothing and you can do it every day and you will feel fantastic for the rest of your life, I'm coming at you from a place of absolute deep down epic passion. Do you get it? So can everybody stand up for me please? Here's step number one. And it sounds so simple. But I want you to really think about how simple this actually is. Just tap one toe, click your fingers, and say it like this. Be happy, 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 be happy. That's it, sit down. That's verse number one. Complicated? Do you think you'll remember it? Do you think it costs any money? Here's the question. When I was standing in front of the mirror, I decided that A, I would become a powerful, passionate, positive woman. From this day forward, I will be a powerful, passionate, positive woman. When I walked back to the school next day, uniform on perfectly, because I used to get bullied about how I wore my uniform, I went straight up to the two gorgeous girls. Bear with me, because you're both blonde, I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did this. Thank you very much. Huge, big smile on my face. Because of you guys, I have become a powerful, passionate, positive woman. Now, they didn't quite know how to respond to this particular new person that had walked into the school. What do you think they might have been expecting the next day? I don't think they thought I was going to show up the next day. They've given me 450 people hate you. I will share this with you. I'm going to climb to the top of the mountain and I'll wave from the top or I'll be dead on the side, but I'm not coming back, I'll do it or die. I've got goosebumps again. When you've got that kind of attitude, do you think the world kind of steps out of your way? I will make it to the top of my mountain, I'll be waving from the top or dead on the side, but I'm not coming back, I'll do it or die. Motivational quote. <laughs> You can decide exactly what your life's going to look like. From this moment forward, you get to decide. No one else gets to decide. You know what people say to me, though? No? Oh, but she, she, she made me feel bad, or she made me feel bad about myself, or she, he hurt me, or this was an argument and he upset me. <laughs> no one has, no one can upset you. You can only allow people to upset you. Have you ever met somebody that's tried to push all your buttons and upset you? Have you, have you ever experienced that? And they know exactly the ones to press. My mother used to do that. She'd go, and I'd go, and she'd press the angry one, and I'd go, and she'd press the lose your temper one, and I'd throw things. <laughs> However, then I decided at 13, I'm going to disconnect those wires. So when somebody presses the button, what happens? Ready? Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. And you guys will remember this. In your chair, please write the word wow. W O W. Now, this is a very fine kinesthetic experience. What was interesting to watch, though, is some of you actually did it straight away. Now, it might be because you've done it before, and you might, I already know how good that feels. So I'm <laughs> 
Some of you did it because every time you have an opportunity to do something new and exciting, you just give it a crack. Some of you, in a millisecond of time, looked around and looked what everybody else was doing. And if everybody else did it, you did it too. All right, I'll do it if everybody else is doing it. And some of you wrote wow with your bottom like this. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> Just as a quick side note, if you have an opportunity to be happy, be happy, be happy, what should you do? If you've got an opportunity to stand up and write wow with your ass, everybody stand up. <laughs> this is a great opportunity. Go W. Woo! Expression for that is someone will end up living rent free in your head. 
when you're angry with somebody else, when you've got a grudge, when something's going on that you, that's not fair. That whole process is now affecting your life. So you stand up right loud with your ass and go, be happy, be happy, be happy, easy. Yes? The other thing I really like this morning, we did it this morning, there's a few cars on the road this morning. Sometimes around Rabina, there's a few cars on the road. Have you noticed? Yes or no? What do most people call that? Can you imagine if you woke up this morning, drove out your driveway, and there was no cars on the road? <laughs> What'd you be thinking about your business? There was no car on the road. Wouldn't you be going, where is everyone? What does cars on the road mean? Really, what does it mean? People are busy, they've got places to go, they're spending money, they've got a job, everything's going great. When I first moved to New Zealand six years ago, there wasn't so many cars on the road, and people were down and depressed, and the market's bad. And now in Auckland, the price, house prices have gone up like the 550,000 percent in six years. Well, six years ago, people were saying, "I can't sell my house," and now they can't. People are buying it, and they don't know how. how seven people want to buy the same house in five minutes. We can't control that. Here's what we do have full control over. You ready? How we respond or react to every situation we have complete control over. Don't you love that? Those of us that are control freaks, oh, I love that. Nobody can upset me or hurt me unless I allow them to, and I get to control that. Just say, Rowie, that's cool. But how do you get to be happy every day? Because, oh, but it's not that, not that easy, Rowie. I've got bills, kids, I've got a stressful life. It's not that easy to be happy. So, have, and here's the other thing I found. Have you found people of late to be a little bit more rude? A little bit less well-mannered? They talk to you a bit ruder and more fast on the phone. Just in general, the human race has got a bit more rude. Oh, I'm going to forgive them. Can you help me? It's like a church thing now. We're going to forgive them. I think people are grumpy because they're fat. I'm not apologising. All of us women have had a fat day. How do you feel when you're having a fat day? Happy or grumpy? You feel a little bit rude when your husband says, how are you? You say, fine. And that's not because you're a nasty person. It's because you don't feel so good about your... Now, I'm in the fitness profession. Here's the funniest ones. The ones, the people who get leaner are the ones who get the most grumpy when they're having a fat day. Now, the ones that have actually lost 10, 15, 20 kilos, they get really grumpy when they're having a fat day. How about this? Wake up in the morning, take all your clothes off, or get out of bed the way you went to bed, which was naked, look in the mirror, and be really thankful for everything you see. If you're a bloke, you say, thank you, I've got a doodle. Because <laughs> wouldn't it suck if you did that one? <laughs> I'll use it, <laughs> it would have been good if you didn't have one. Are there men who don't have one? Yes, or it's so tiny you can't see it, all sorts of challenges. Yes? One of my personal trainers from my college in Brisbane, no legs. She used to put her collapsible wheelchair between her legs and dip herself up the stairs to get into the college. And people would say, Do you want me to help you with the wheelchair? And she'd say, No, no, I'm getting a workout. I'm doing great. She gave me her final, PT, her final PT evaluation. She trained me. I was her client. It's one of the best workouts I've ever had. How many people whine about having fat legs? I hear them all the time. Oh, look at these lumps on my legs. I'm so fat. Isn't it fantastic? You've got a couple of them that you can walk around on. See, we always look for the things that we don't like. How about we appreciate the things that we do? Yesterday was Thankful Day, so everybody just quickly stand up because like, I think you know this song and I'm going to introduce you to it. May your Mondays be magical, may your Tuesdays be terrific, may your Wednesdays be very well, <laughs> and your Thursdays be thankful, may your Fridays be a fun day, may your Saturdays be super, may your Sundays be sparkly, because you choose them to be. Now that wasn't very hard, was it? Magical day, terrific day, wow day, thankful day, super day with seven O's and sparkle day. You ready? Four, three, two, one. May your Mondays be magical, may your Tuesdays be terrific, may your Wednesdays be very well. 
and your Thursdays be thankful. May your Fridays be a fun day. May your Saturdays be super. May your Sundays be sparkly. Now, this is the most important line of the song. Because you choose them to be. Come on, that was awesome. So, have a seat. Here's what I'm asking you to do. You, we. Remember the two girls at my school, everybody followed them in the wrong direction. <coughs> what if you became the happiest, most positive person in your world? What if every time somebody said, how are you, and it happened to be magical day, instead of saying monday Monday-itis, I've got an inflammation of the Monday, <laughs> you said, how do you think I am? It's magical day. See, this is a system for being happy. Remember I said I'm going to give you some things to do? On magical day, I'm magical. When somebody says to me, what day is it? I find it very difficult to say, I don't ever say Monday. I'll say magical day Monday. But most of the time, I just say magical day. Terrific day. You go through the checkout. Someone says this to you, how are you today? They have to, by the way. Did you know that? They have to ask you how you are when you go through the checkout. Wouldn't it be nice if you said, I'm infecting people with my terrificness today. It's terrific day. <laughs> Lunatic at checkout seven. <laughs> You know the best conversations I have are with checkout people because they just don't get people that happy. And you walk around with a smile on your t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine if you said, it's wow day, and you wrote wow with your body. Here's the big one. Thankful day was yesterday. I don't know if you've been watching the news of late. I don't find it particularly entertaining to watch news, and I have never, ever had a time. Have you ever turned the news on and it's been all good news stories? Ever? All they do is find bad news. Some of the worst news in the world, and I wake up yesterday morning, so I say I'm really, really thankful I live in Australia and New Zealand because I spend time in both countries. Imagine if you're a woman and you lived in Syria or Afghanistan. First time I went to Dubai, I found it really weird. I went to the supermarket, there's 30 checkouts, all blokes. These women are not allowed to work, they're not allowed to drive, they're not allowed to be educated. Aren't you glad to live in a country where that doesn't happen? So when you wake up on thankful day morning, instead of saying, oh, I'm going to have a fat day, oh, there's rain coming out of the sky, oh, there's going to be traffic on the road, oh, it's going to be a long day, there's a good one. No, it's not. There's only going to be 24. It's not going to be a long day. It's logical. You could say, I'm so thankful that I've got... Here's a beautiful one. I'm having a fat day. No, you're not. Isn't it fantastic I've got five extra kilos on my body because I now, that proves I live in a country where I can choose what I eat, I get to eat as much as I want, and I get to lose it if I want to. Would you exercise with a more positive attitude if you thought about exercise that way? Instead of, oh, I'm so fat, I wish I could lose five kilos, I'm miserable. Yeah, well, you're going to have a pretty bad day. So what's the first? <coughs> Be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy. Now, is there any more words to that verse? It's not be happy if it's sunny, be happy if you're on holidays, be happy if you've got a new boyfriend, be happy if you've got 4,000 likes on Facebook. No, no, just be happy. You choose. Like it? Next one I think you've heard before. Join in when you're ready. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Sing. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. And drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. 1749 boys at Palmerston North Boys High School sang that at the top of their voice. Quiet. Now here's our small challenge. And it is only a small challenge. We all, we all know we need to drink water, yes or no? Yes. Brain cells 90% fluid, muscle 60-70% fluid. So obviously fluid controls your whole body. We all get that, yes? Now here's an interesting question though. How long can you live without exercise? Several years. <laughs> Most people their whole life. Yeah. Most people don't do any. How long can you live without food? 100 days. Yeah. About three months. That's hundreds a lot. Yeah, I think, I think that might be the world record. That's not a world record that you want to hold. Palmerston North Boys High School, it's like seven minutes. <laughs> but isn't it interesting that as a human race, we've gotten fat, fatter and sicker and weaker, we're more diseased, we're more happy, we're more, more unhappy, more grumpy, more rude because we're not physically healthy and fit. Would that be fair to say that? But something as simple as, if you open a diet or an exercise book, and I, every time, I did it last night at the airport in New Zealand, I went to the shelf that said diet and exercise, and I looked at all the new books. And I speed read, and I speed read all the, the first couple of chapters of all the new books. 
And they don't start with water. They talk about food and exercise. However, how long can you live without water? Three days. Three days and you are dead. But we talk about exercise, you can go whole life without doing it. We talk about food, you can live for 100 days without eating it, but water, three days. But here's what the recommendation is, you tell me. What's the recommendation? Fluid? Two litres a day or eight glasses. Which size glass? <laughs> oh, she's on doing it. Here's Senna. We've got a new Simone. Simone. And just round about 50 kilos, maybe? Yes,
Put to the person next to you and say, my goal is to have long hair wigs. And when I do, I'm going to have a pee party. <laughs> <laughs> But I spend time in schools with teenage girls and younger who get embarrassed to talk about we. It's so important they get embarrassed. <coughs> oh, miss, we're talking about we. So what's number one? Be happy, be happy, be happy, and drink more water. You've got clear weeds. Drink more water. You've got clear weeds. Now it could cost if you have to drink French water from the Alps of the. French mountains, it might cost. <laughs> but my suggestion is if you can't get water from the French mountains Alps, then drink it anyway. Sound good? Easy. Next one. Get a bit of a wrap up going and in your chair, it's remember the wow, right wow with your bottom. Well, this one's kind of the same because it's kinesthetic on your ass. You have to feel this on your ass. Get the hands going as well like a wrap up thing. It goes this. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Now you know that already, don't you? We all know that, don't we? If we ate more stuff that came out of the ground, what would we be eating? Potatoes. <laughs> oh, see, that's arguable. What I'm, I'm aiming to give you, and this is the exact, the underlying phenomenon of what I want to share with you this morning is it's actually not arguable. No one will tell you that it's better to be grumpy than happy. No one will tell you that you go into your exercise session feeling grumpy and miserable. They'll all, everyone will say it's better to be happy. Here's a quick one on food and this is a classic, I love this. <laughs> how yummy are they? Tell me, how yummy are they? <laughs> Here's what makes me sad and I often do this. I'll go to a, a, a coffee shop and there'll be a beautiful gorgeous woman there sitting with a piece of cake, like a big creamy piece of chocolate mud cake and I'll go, yeah, that looks awesome. Like food's like orgasm for your mouth. It's meant to be enjoyed. And I'll go, wow, that looks awesome. And you know what she says? I shouldn't be eating this, it's bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, bloody don't eat it if it's bad for you. That's ridiculous. But if you're gonna sit there and that, have that beautiful consumption thing in front of you, enjoy it. Put a smile on your face and be happy, be happy, be happy. Because once you've eaten it, and there could be an argument about that as well, it is gone. Enjoy the fact that you had a beautiful moment and you had something yummy to eat. Men may not get this, but women spend so much time feeling guilty about something they already did. You already ate it. And I spent nearly 27 years of my career dealing with women who, and I'll give you the worst case scenario, I was a young girl down here at the Palm Beach uh, Eating Disorder Clinic. And we had a, a tough day one day. I was training her and I said, what's going on with you today, sweetie? Because she's never very happy. But girls with anorexia are never very happy. But this day particularly unhappy. And I said, what's going on? And she showed me her diary. And she said, a year ago I ate a piece of cake. And she was still feeling guilty about that one piece of cake from 12 months ago. It's like the anniversary of the day she oh. ate the cake. Wow. Is that good? Is that happy? Do you think we're meant to live like that? Just say, no, Rowie. No. And for those of you that are mothers or will be mothers, this is a real concern to me because I deal with too many five and six year old little girls in primary schools now who are talking about going on a diet, have been on a diet, are already calling themselves fat. Worst case scenario was a little girl in a low, low socioeconomic school in New Plymouth. 68 kilos and six years of age. That is one seriously large little girl Here's the challenge. If we told her to exercise for half an hour, could she? <coughs> There's no way. We, our, and this little girl has a, uh, I spent a lot of time with her, has a history of, I'm too fat, I'm lazy, I don't have discipline, I need to go on a diet, and that is her whole headspace, and she's six. Where did that come from? Nice. She can go read a book. We can't do that to our kids. I want our kids to grow up in a world where healthy, fit, and strong is normal. And coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, depression, obesity is not normal in my lifetime because they're all preventable diseases. If we can apply these five simple steps, imagine if everybody woke up every day, fluttered their little eyelids open and went, be happy, be happy. You get to decide how you feel when you wake up, yes? Then you don't have a tinkle, which you will do. 
and you'll have a look, and if it's yellow, what are you going to do? Drink more water till you've got clear wings. Drink more water till you've got clear wings. Now, eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, we know that. I said to a, an interesting group from the um, TSS school, young boy, beautiful uniform, stood up, and I, you know, I asked them the question, why do we need to eat more fruit and vegetables? And I'll never ask that question again, because he stood up very studiously, and he said, because they have vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and fibre, and they're good for us, yes. Yes, and that's very boring. <laughs> and if I try and share that message with the world, what will happen? <laughs> so here's why we, and I wish at 13 that I knew that. From 10 to 13, I wish I knew what I was about to share with you. The number one reason to eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, you say that you poo two times every day. Two times every day. And it needs to just slide out easily. <laughs> what? There's a little sound. What? 1,749 boys at one pass from boys high school. What? <laughs> Good, huh? <laughs> I really, really, really need all of us to get this because if girls don't like talking about we, they definitely don't talk about poo. <laughs> and we really need to be poo party. <laughs> because it's called SHIT for a reason. Do you want that stuff inside your body or out? Out. If it stays in there for too long, what happens? <laughs> For those of you who didn't hear, the answer was you're full of shit. <laughs> At 13, I was always bloated. I always felt uncomfortable. And I think I shared with this with you last time I was here. I was on the tw uh, twisty and white bread diet. I used to eat one bread roll filled up with twisties, a white bread roll, and that was my entire eating for the day. Now, you lose a lot of weight on that diet because not very many calories. How often do you think you poo when you're on that diet? <laughs> I did have a client, his name was Matt, my favourite client of all time. And the first time I met him, which is a great question you should all be asking each other on a regular basis, I asked him, I said, Matt, how often do you poo? And he said Sundays. He didn't say sparkle days, he said Sundays. I said, tell me that, Matt. He said, I take the newspaper into the bathroom and hope that something comes out. One in three men that die of cancer die of bowel or colon cancer. Why do you think that is? Because there's not good going on. How's it go? <laughs> when you eat fruit, vegetables, nuts, olives, avocados, the stuff that comes out of the ground, not in a packet or a bag or a building with bright lights on it, if most of what you eat, notice what I, it doesn't say everything you eat, it's got to come out of the ground, everything, I didn't say that, did I? What's a simple message? Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. <laughs> more out of the ground than what comes in a packet or a bag. Is that easy? People say, Rowie, I need to read the labels, you know, this is my... Box of pens, but let's just say it's a box of biscuits. We say, What should you know? Tell me about this. How much sugar is it got in it? It's all these chemicals and all that stuff. I tell you, know, eat more stuff that comes out of the bag. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff. Not everything. My one of my favorite things is hot chips and gravy. Winter time in New Zealand, hot chips and gravy. And then it comes with a big bowl. In New Zealand, we have these enormous bowls of hot drink in winter. Enjoy that. But most of what you eat comes out of the ground. Easy. And how would you know that that's working? Yeah. Wood. 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 <laughs> and have a poo party. Yeah. And as you know, if it's stuff. floating on the top, you're probably getting too much fibre. So you know if you have it at Christmas and you eat, you know, 10 plums and a peach and oh. three nectarines and you go to the bathroom, everything's floating on the top. And if it's, it's really struggling to get out and it sinks to the bottom, Definitely not enough fibre. About submarine-ish is good. Oh, yeah. So, come on, get excited about this. <laughs> it's easy. Now, I know that you know this already, but the challenge with the Western society today is a lot of things that we know that we don't do. If we all did this, if we all had a better attitude, if we all drank more water, we had more clear ways, if we ate more stuff that comes out of the ground, how would we be going so far? There's only two more. Two. Easy. Ready? <sighs> <laughs> yes, it's very important to breathe. We, we didn't do that one first because we're presuming that we're all doing that already. <laughs> I'm using this for a reason because I'm with the dentist. And I use you guys as an example every time I use this and that's why I'm so excited to be here. <coughs> puffing. I call it huffy puffy. If you go to the gym, they're going to call it this. <coughs> Howdy <-o. laughs> See the response? <laughs> Most people hate cardio, except the fanatical freaks that love cardio, 
And let me put that into perspective for you. Since I've been in the fitness profession since the age of 13, around about 10% of the population has exercised. That hasn't changed. The population's gotten bigger, but the percentage is the same. Which means what? 10% are fanatical freaks who love to exercise or will or do or feel guilty if they don't. What's with this group? Quick market research. How many people have somebody in your life, it can be you or someone else, who don't do any exercise? Hands up. They have to eat water, eat water. They have to eat food and they have to drink water. They don't, they don't do any exercise. Because somebody says, you have to do cardio. And you have to do 30 minutes or don't bother. I used to say that to me. Do 30 minutes or don't bother. That's what happened. <laughs> Who's got 30 minutes? My little girl, that's why I use the example. When you're 68 kilos and you're six years of age, can you exercise for 30 minutes? You cannot. Your poor little body is just puffing when. How long would it take her to get puffed, do you think? Everybody stand up. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. In about three months' time, the... The fastest man on the planet, who is currently the fastest man on the planet, is about to give it another crack. What's his name? Usain Bolt. What's his name? Usain Bolt. It's not Usain Wolf, is it? <laughs> <laughs> got it? Yeah? Now, what we're going to do, and people will say to me, Rowie, you haven't got the right exercise clothes on. I don't care about exercise clothes. This is the best kind at the moment. <laughs> Are you ready? Keep your feet close to the ground if you've got high heel shoes on. And all I want you to do is sprint as fast as you can. If you're not feeling well or if you've got some kind of challenge with your body, just lift your knees higher. Yeah? Go. Go! Come on, go! Hard and fast, hard and fast, hard and fast. Go, 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 stop. Yeah? See, the fanatical freaky people just say they just want to keep going. Now, why do we have to stop? We were puffed. Now, this is the really good news. Fit people get puffed really fast. Unfit people get puffed really fast. The only difference is how long it takes to recover. So unfit people will take a little bit longer to get their breath back. <coughs> fit people will get their breath back really quickly. And that's how you know that you're getting fit. But how long does it take to get puffed? Not long, about 10 seconds. You saying bolt 9.54 seconds. 100 metres. <laughs> Do you reckon he's puffed at the end of his 9.54 seconds? Yeah. How long? The biggest challenge with exercise is that we've made it too long and too boring and too intimidating. People go, I have to go for a walk for an hour. Here's what I think. I think that walking makes us fat. I've walked for... <laughs> 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 Bored to tears, it felt like five hours. <laughs> How many calories do you think you actually burn off in a one hour walk? 150, 200 maybe, depending on the size of your body. I walked for so long, I walked for an hour. I deserve a little reward. <laughs> <laughs> have a little muffin. <laughs> I've walked for a whole hour. I burn up 200. How many did I put in? 350. Now I'm fatter because I went for a walk. <laughs> that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah? People talk about long, slow distance exercise to burn fat, which technically is correct because that is your fat burning zone. But you don't want to be in your fat burning zone. Usain Bolt is never in his fat burning zone. It takes 10 seconds to get puffed. That's your phosphate and anaerobic zone. Fit people burn fat faster. Hear this very carefully because this is so exciting. Not when they're freaking exercising. When do they burn fat faster? For the 23 and 55 minutes of the day, hours, that they're not exercising. Everybody in this room that's fit right now that are in the seated position, there's two cool things happening. The fit people are burning calories faster. But the beautiful thing is you're a spiritual quotient, which is the, the percentage fat versus carbohydrate being burnt to keep you alive. When you're fit, you are a fat-burning machine. You're burning fat faster. Your body wants to burn fat because there's lots of it to burn. We've all got fat to burn, yeah? Carbohydrate, which is the other energy source, is for your brain to function and for your liver to function and for your muscles to function, but you can only store about 450 to 500 grams. It's a small storage space. Got that? 450 to 500 grams, that's it. How much fat can we store? <laughs> How much can the fat store expand? We've got 50 billion fat cells and they expand. Have you noticed? You can go from 65 kilos to 165 kilos, and that's not carbohydrate that's filling up the fat cells. What's going in there? The fat cells keep getting bigger and bigger. Now, there's a big argument right now I know about carbohydrate protein, and I'm not here to argue. If you eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, how will you feel? 
How many times a day will you be pooing? Will you be light or heavy? How much easier it will be to sprint for 10 seconds? <laughs> and when you're fit, your body becomes a fat-burning machine when? All the time. <laughs> and if you talk to people who are really fit, they can't get enough calories in. They have to eat for nutrition and for performance, but ultimately they end up having to eat cake and lollies because they can't get enough calories because their body is a fat-burning machine. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm going to turn my body, if it isn't already, into a fat-burning machine. <laughs> And there's, a, there's only a reason for that because I use dentists, and I'll go back to that example. How often should you brush your teeth? And how long for? Which is how many minutes a day? Okay, and we do that for what reason? Okay, here's the main reason though. If, if you don't brush your teeth, you'll get, give me all the technical reasons. What will happen if you don't brush your teeth? Decay, bad breath, gum disease. You could die. Who wants to kiss you? No one. No one. Here's the most important one though. How do you feel if you don't brush your teeth? There's lots of technical reasons to exercise. And the university, original university research was three times a week. Why would you only want to feel good three times a week? Why would you only want to have sex three times a week when you can have it for four times a day? Girls <laughs> are going, no. <laughs> your teeth thing. <coughs> if the whole world got puffed four times a day, and how long does it take to get puffed? Yeah, Everybody stand up, we're going to do it again. Just say get, get the idea. So if you've been close to the ground, go high heel shoes on, and if you've got any form of injury or if you're sick, just set your knees up. On your mark, get set, go. Woo! Now count loud, go. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Hold your movies if you need to. Four, three, two, stop. Everybody feels better than before they did that. Everybody. It's not called runners high for nothing. It really is. It really is. But we think that to get runners high, we have to run for 30 minutes or an hour. 30 seconds, endorphins will be rushing through your brain. What happens? To, what is endo, What is an endorphin? It's the drug, it's the most addictive drug on the planet. If you got your body rushed through with endorphins four times a day, do you reckon you might get more addicted to that feeling? Now here's what we do, my silly profession. We're the best drug dealers on the planet. Let me tell you about my drug. You ready? Because I'm sure you have people who want to sell you drugs, some, any form of kind of drug. Well, here's me as a drug dealer. Here's my drug. It will keep you young. Have you noticed how young people are that are healthy? Strong. It'll keep you young and have great self esteem. Make sure that you never get fat, it'll make sure you don't get disease. Coronary heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, and depression, you'll never have them in your life if you're healthy, fit, and strong. Uh, you will fit into all of your clothes, you won't have to spend much money on clothes, but if you do like spending money on clothes, you'll be the perfect coat hanger. You can go shopping on a regular basis, look in the, those horrible mirrors with the down lights, and be proud of what you look like naked. How good does that sound? If you're a young man, you'll have bigger muscles in all the right places, so you'll have, be able to attract more chicks. Is that good? <coughs> and if you're a woman, you like looking good in a bikini, you will. How are we going for this particular product? Here's my little product in this little jar here, and you can buy four pills, and you take that, and all of those things will happen. Would people buy that pill? Yes. yes, of course they would. Now, I'm going to pretend I'm a heroin dealer. If I want to get you addicted to heroin, <laughs> it will make you feel good, yes? Technically, I don't know. <laughs> if I wanted to addict you to heroin, would I give you an overdose the first time? Because if I overdosed you the first time, what would happen? You'd never come back. You could die and you'd feel terrible and you wouldn't do it. That's what most fitness people do. They put you in the gym and they put you on an exercise program and they make it so damn hard at the start. So they overdose you the first time. The next day you're like this and you oh, can't yeah. move. <laughs> or you hated it so much. because This is a quote from a gentleman I spoke to yesterday. He's one of my students. He's a fitness studying to be a fitness professional. He said, I hate going to the gym. And I said, how come, Jed? How did it come you hate going to the gym? He said, because it makes you feel like a dick when you go to the gym. <laughs> that was his quote. He's a good looking young man and a nice bloke, but he doesn't want to go because he doesn't want to look like a dick. You don't have to go to the gym. See this little space you've got here? 
That's next to your chair at your desk at work, yes or no? The toilet. The toilet on the plane. I have got in trouble on the plane. What's this uh, rumbling noise going on? Uh, <laughs> Now you don't you don't have to jog if you don't have to jog you can squat you can do push-ups you can box you can skip anything that gets your heart rate you can vacuum fast every set of stairs is an opportunity to get puffed if you have to go to the back office go there fast you'll get puffed if you walk fast the beautiful thing is with really overweight people who absolutely hate to exercise because it hurts how long does it take they don't even have to jog if they go for a really fast walk how long does it take to an overweight person a really overweight person to get puffed 10 seconds like everybody else and how many times? Here's the exercise program. 40 seconds a day. Now I'm going to sound really harsh. Ready? By the way, I think you've already gathered. If you don't like me, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've already gathered. Here's what I do, and I want you to really like you. Because I think the big challenge with people being grumpy is they don't like themselves very much because they're not healthy, fit, and strong. Healthy, fit, and strong people really like who they are, which means they then treat other people so much better. Does that make sense? So here's what I think. If you ever make an excuse ever again for not exercising, because what's the number one excuse that people use for not exercising? And it isn't being a dick. What is it? I haven't got time. 40 seconds a day. Now those of you that are freaky fanatics and love to do it, <laughs> the long distance still isn't better. Oh, I went for an hour. Good on you. Uh -huh. <laughs> here's the challenge. And for the freaky fanatics, please bear with me. For those of us who are free to connect, here's the challenge. If you are in great shape, do people take notice? And here's what they usually say. Or you might have taken photos of your abdominals and put them on Facebook. <laughs> here's my abdominals. I don't know why. Came in, he goes, here's my shin. What do you think? Like, why is it this bit? Anyway, so you're in great shape and somebody says to you, you're in great shape. How did that make you feel? What do you do? And what do we want to do now? Tell them. We want to tell them what we do. So, freaky fanatics, here's what we tell them. I go to the gym for two hours every day. And I run and I ride my bike to work and I do push-ups at my desk and I eat beans and I drink protein powder and I eat clean food and I only, what's the latest one? I only eat what you can catch and grow and there's all these things that people talk about. And the mere mortals, the 90% of people who don't want to do any exercise, they want to look like you, healthy, fit and strong. But do they want to go to the gym for two or three hours every day? Do they want to go running? No. Do they want to go running? Do they want to ride their bike? No. So I think that the fanatical, freaky people have a lot to answer for. Because the normal average person who says, I can be bothered, I'm going to have pizza, end up doing nothing. Because that's all too hard. If you told, I used this this morning, if you told people they had to brush their teeth for 30 minutes a day, where would tooth decay be right now? <laughs> and here's another interesting side. If you did brush your teeth for 30 minutes a day because you were a freaky fanatic about your teeth, what would happen? <laughs> You'd wear it all the way. It would be too much. It would be over brushing, wouldn't it? Most people who go to the gym for hours and hours are overtrained. Their joints are completely screwed up and wrecked. And I'm just going to use this as a quick example because we've got the four puffs a day, we've got that. Do we need to be strong? Yes. Now, the blokes get it, the women, because mm -hmm. they think she's going to talk about weight training. I don't want to do weight training, I don't want to get big muscles. Mm -hmm. I agree. Up until the age of 20, all of us as women, we are putting on muscle size. It's called growth. Like that. Blokes are putting on a bit more because they have testosterone. Guess how much testosterone we've got? Tiny amounts. If we're lucky, very, very tiny amounts. Blokes, if they're lucky, have a bit more, which means they have the capacity or the potential to put on muscle size. But those of you that had anything to do with the gym, how many blokes can actually go to the gym, lift weights and get huge? How many? Without steroids, how many? That's blokes full of testosterone. <coughs> if they're lucky, they can put on 10, maybe 15 kilos. Really, really lucky with really good genetics and large amounts of testosterone, they can put on maybe 10 to 15 kilos. If they're lucky, most blokes, they're struggling to put on five. And all women in the room are going, I don't want to put on five kilos. 
<laughs> oh, I agree. Absolutely agree. But up until the age of 20, we're all putting on muscle because that's poor growth. We have to have muscles. Do we or do we not? Yes. Have you ever seen anybody <coughs> who's either laid in a hospital bed for a week or more, male or female, or they've had their arm wrapped in plaster and the plaster comes off? Have you ever seen what happens? So if you lie down for a long time and you don't do very much or you're inactive, what happens to your muscles? So would you be weak or strong? Weak. weak. Life comes along and throws challenges at you every day, yes or no? Yes. This has to be strong. I agree. But what's this connected to? If cancer is thrown at you, if grief is thrown at you, if a disaster is thrown at you, my head office used to be in Christchurch, Big disaster in that city. Big, big disaster. Life's going to throw stuff at us all the time. Will we be better if we are physically strong or would it be better if we were weak? If somebody's giving us a hard time, if we've got an emotional challenge to deal with, better to be physically weak or strong? Strong. The challenge with strength, most of the strength training things that you've ever heard about have come from the Austrian philosopher called Mr. Schwarzenegger. <laughs> which is five times a week to the gym, or six or seven, three times a, three exercise sessions or four every day, multiple sets, three sets of 10, five sets of 10. Bear with me. Two great pieces of information. Can we agree that we need to be strong? The only thing that will make muscles strong is overload. So if I go to the gym and I pick up my two kilogram dumbbell and do some <laughs> And the lid falls off. And then I leave the gym with my seven kilogram bag, <laughs> which is going to give me more benefit, the two kilogram dumbbells or the seven kilogram handbag? Take away from today, get a heavier handbag. <laughs> <laughs> if the lid doesn't come off, what do we normally say? Can you get that for me, please? We usually say that, don't we? Take every opportunity to take your freaking lid off. <laughs> People offered the concierge guy at the hotel last night, can I carry your bag for you? No, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I love you dearly, but that's my opportunity to lift something heavy. The only thing that muscles respond to is overload. You have to lift something heavier than what your, your body is used to for it to be overloaded. Now that's, first of all, you have to overload. Second, you ready? Muscles are blind. There's no little eye that pokes out and says, no, you have to do bicep curls with a dumbbell. No, you have to do bicep curls with a machine. What if I lifted my bag? What if I lifted my bag in a really functional way? Because when I put my bag down, I would lift it, wouldn't I? I wouldn't then curl it up. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? The challenge, and you'll feel it straight away, because particularly my bag's heavy, seven and a half kilos, I know because I weighed it last time. When I lift it this way, I've now got this, gravity's now pushing through my joint. And my body wasn't designed to take grab uh, forces through my joint. I've now got a shearing force through my joint. I can very happily carry my bag because that's a compression force or retraction force through my joint, nice and safe. The reason I'm sharing that with you is that most, remember they're brushing your teeth for 30 minutes? Most of the exercises that will ever be given to you in the gym will hurt your body. And the reason I can stand here so passionately and share that with you is I'm now 15 years to do all that stupid exercises. Remember for three years I used to do these ones these ones, and particularly these ones. I'll ask a simple question. No, I won't. I'll, I'll, I won't. Okay. What's the main reason do you think that people do sit-ups? Or crunches, or planks, or core exercises, or any kind of exercise? Would we all agree? Yes? Would some other people add in perhaps what would be another reason? Easy. I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is, no, this is really cool. <laughs> well, let's put that into perspective. If I lift a heavy weight, I might be able to do 10 or 12, and then how many sit-ups can I do? 50, 100,000, doesn't depend So, no, the, the question is this. Um, rephrase. I've got a body. How's it broken up? Can I break my body up? <laughs> when I go running, which muscles am I using? 
If I'm sprinting, which muscles am I using? Base muscles, abdominal muscles, toe muscles, finger muscles. <laughs> <laughs> the body's a human piece that works together. Everything functions together. Now, last week I was at the chiropractic college in New Zealand having a very similar chat. What is actually the thing that connects completely from top to toe? This bit, yeah? And what runs through that bit? The central nervous system, which fires what? Everything, yeah? So, I'm going to do sit ups because I want to have a. <laughs> and I might want to do it because I want to have a strong abdominal area. Sometimes the people will tell you, well, you know, you've got a weak core. You've heard that expression? That's a new one. You've got a weak core, woman. How does that make you feel? Powerful, passionate, positive woman, and somebody says you've got a weak core. So, let me ask you this question. If I go to the swimming pool, and this would be a, a blind question. If I go to the swimming pool and I have a bucket, and I say to you, excuse me, sir, could you please get this bucket and take water out of the deep end? <laughs> what would he think? Not me. Blocked. <laughs> and you go, no, you can't do that. And I go, okay, well, can you take water out of the shallow end for me? opens up your fat cells and shoves the fat in there really fast. You don't want to be doing that. Has anybody heard of a catecholamine? If there is an insulin hormone, what must there be something else? If there's an, a, a hormone that opens up the cells to put stuff in, what must there be? There must be a hormone that gets it back out again because otherwise we'd just blow up, wouldn't we? <laughs> we'd go like Mr Crusoe in the movie. <laughs> Some of you have seen the movie. So, catecholamines, you don't hear about that, do you? That hormone gets really active when you get puffed. When you get puffed, catecholamines go whoosh, open up all the fat cells, bring fat into your bloodstream so you can oxidise it off and get rid of it. Guess how many fat cells open? All of them open! Not just these ones! So if you do these ones, and you said it beautifully, because that's pretty easy, isn't it? It's a, little easy, it's, a, it's a little easy exercise for this little part of your body. And you hate them because there's a burning sensation when you do them, isn't there? Yeah? And you know what we think that burning sensation is? Exploding fat cells! Oh, I can feel the burn. There must be fat things exploding out of my body. Well, actually, it isn't. <laughs> That's a, a little uh, unfortunate feeling. It's just a... Um, a waste product pushing lactic acid, pushing up against your nerve endings and causing pain, it's a burning sensation. We mistake that for exploding fat cells. Now here's what you really want. You want fat to come out of your whole body, which means you want your whole body to be moving. you just got to get puffed. Now this doesn't make you puff so much. Everybody stand up again. <laughs> Count loud. That's exactly what we're doing. On your mark, get set, go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, cloud, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo. Guess what just happened? Catecholamines, whoosh, fat cells open. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, but fit people burn fat faster at all the time. When you're on the computer, when you're looking at someone's teeth, when you're face looking, when you're driving in the car, when you're sitting in the movies, all the time, fit people burn fat faster. But the fitter you get, the more your body turns into a fat burning machine. So you've got to get fit to get puffed. But here's the beautiful thing. When you do big, heavy, strong, puffy exercises, those catecholamines come out. Open the fat cells and you oxidise fat faster. Come on, get excited about this stuff. Yes. Yes. Now, <laughs> do you want little results or big results? Big. big. So you've got to do little exercises or big exercises? <laughs> little ones or big ones? Now, this is a little one compared to sprinting, where you're using every muscle in your whole body. We'll do it for fun, just because it's fun. People say, no, I don't like going to the gym. Hands up if you don't like going to the gym. Great. Do you have a fall? Yeah. 
going up as the chair. Find yourself uh -huh. a bit of floor. You're going to say, Robert, you don't have the right clothes on to exercise. We've all done this already this morning. Come on. We're going to have such a great day today. <laughs>
happy and healthy at 100 plus. Now, for those of you that are 20, that sounds ridiculous. I get that, because when I was 20, 50 was really old. When you're 50, and I'll just give you two quick examples, my favorite stories ever. A guy ran marathon in Toronto, Canada. He was 100 years of age. He ran 42.2 kilometers, 100 years old. That's a cool story, yes? Here's the cooler part of the story. He beat five people. Wow. Five people had to go home from the Toronto Marathon and tell their family and friends that a 100-year-old man beat <laughs> That's cool. I'd be proud to say that. <laughs> Hammond and I were skiing at Whistler in Canada. Anybody ever done that? Very cool. It's the longest runs in the world. You, you do once down Whistler Mountain. And it's, we were like 35 at the time, tired. It was Christmas Day, we got into the, they're closed in heated lifts. And we go up to the top of the mountain. There's this old couple in there, I'm talking over 80, husband and wife, over 80, are skiing on Christmas Day. I get off at the easy runs, they go up to the double black diamond runs, they're over 80. See, people say, I don't want to get old because I don't want to lose my quality of life. You don't have to when you're strong. You don't have to when you're fit. The end of the day, which by winter is not that late, so it's like 4.35 in the afternoon, we're coming down the mountain, and the old couple, let's go for another one. Let's just get a last run in. At the end of the day, they've been skiing all day. Over 80, come on. That's quality of life, isn't it? Yeah. That's called being strong and being fit. Now, the only way to do that is to maintain your strength. Now, even if you love going to the gym, there will be a time in your life where you don't have time. You don't have time to drive to the gym, do three sets of 10, 27 exercises, and be there for an hour and a half. What you'll always have time to do is pick an exercise for the front of your body, pick an exercise for the back of your body, and pick an exercise for your legs. So at my house, I've invested a very expensive $100 on a gym dip bar and a set of dumbbells, which overall is about $150. But I don't need that either because I could do push-ups on the floor and I can do chin-ups on the monkey bars. Uh, I can do chin-ups on the eaves, eaves of my house, which I used to do before I got my chin-up bar. All I'm asking you to do is, you know what women say to me because I'm looking at your faces and I know I can't do chin -ups. Why can't women do chin-ups? Because they're not strong. Because they don't do them. <laughs> I can't do chin-ups. First of all, if you say that, you can't. But if you gave it a crack, could you? You were beautiful. Yours was a classic because you said, I can't do push-ups on my toes. You said that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but you got up on your toes and you did a really good half one. Yeah. Not awesome. Yeah? <laughs> no, no, that was awesome. Because you can say, I can't do push-ups. But if you only do half a one, Tomorrow you give it another crack, what might you be able to do? You might do three quarters, yeah? And in two days' time you might do one, yeah? And then you might be able to do two, and then you might do three. So your muscles respond to what? Overload! They respond to overload! And usually the heaviest thing in most people's lives is their own muscles. I'm going to wrap all of that up. You have to be strong. It goes like this, be strong. Say it, be strong. This is the fifth verse to the song now. See how complicated the song is? Be strong. How's it go? Be strong. I'm asking you to get rid of all the rubbish. If you love going to the gym and you love exercising, you love doing all of that stuff, all I'm going to ask you to do is look after your joints because a lot of the exercises that we do aren't good for our joints. I'll give you a quick cut. If I was in your office and I had a box or a big heavy bag and I did this with it in your office, what would the workplace health and safety officer say? What's your back? <laughs> Are you the workplace health and safety officer? <laughs> you wouldn't do it, would you? It would be dangerous. So why do we take that same movement with a heavy weight to the gym and say that it's perfectly okay? It will hurt you. Yeah, it will hurt your back, it will hurt your knees, it will hurt your neck, it will hurt you. So just keep the common sense. I'm asking you to do this because most people say to me, I don't like going to the gym, I don't want to be fit, I don't want to be strong, it's all too hard. And I'm trying to make this process so simple and so non-arguable that the 90% of people that don't do anything actually want to give it a crack. The 10% that go, they're always going to go and they're fanatics and they love it. And they'll argue about whether you should be vegetarian or paleo or you should be pescatarian, the last one I heard. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I always ask. And just as a quick side note on food before we finish up, it is now politically incorrect to talk about food. You don't talk about sexuality, you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about religion. If you want to have an argument at a social event, start talking about food and you'll create a huge big argument because people are very passionate about what they do. That 10% fanatical group. <laughs> What's the first one? We're gonna do three of each. Be happy, be happy, be happy, and drink more water till you've got clear ways. Drink more water till you've got clear ways. Drink more water till you've got clear ways. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. <sighs> Be 
strong! Be strong! Be strong! Yeah. May your Mondays be magical, may your Tuesdays be terrific, may your Wednesdays be very well, and your Thursdays be thankful, may your Fridays be a fun day, may your Saturdays be super! May your Sundays be sparkly, because you choose them to be.
I'm asking you as adults, because I now spend most of my time with young kids, because I'm not sure that any of us are going to change. I don't think anything that I've said this morning will actually make any difference, unless you wanted to. But nothing I've said today, if you haven't heard before, you just might have heard it in a different way. But I'm not sure you'll change. You'll only change if something drastic happens in your life and you have to. But our kids, I think they really need adults that they can look up to and be inspired by. I want our kids to hear stories like this. There's an artist in Queenstown in New Zealand who's just been offered a commission by Peter Jackson and who's the, Steven Spielberg are fighting over him at the moment. The contract is $300 million. He, was an, oh, he is an artist who was told he wasn't very good. His art teacher said, you're not a very good artist. Go and get a real job. So he did. He went and got a real job. Until luckily an artist found him and said, young man, you really have a talent. You really should do something with this talent. And he did. Now, but that isn't about the money, by the way. That's a lot of money. But do you think he would still keep doing being an artist without the money? If you love what you do, it's never about the money. And that's what I want to share with you. When Kane Ann so beautifully shared, yes, I've been on the BOW Young Rich list. The question that Peter Stefanovic asked me when he called me from a current affair and said, we want to come and do a story on you for the BOW Young Rich, he says, that's cool. How much am I worth? Did you have blonde tech? <laughs> How come you don't know? I don't have anything to do with the money in my business. I don't care. I do this because I want to be here. If the only thing that happens this morning is you have the influence on one child in your life that never goes on a diet or never does a silly gym program or never is dehydrated or thinks the fruit and vegetables are fantastic, then we've had a really great morning. If the only thing that happens for you is you leave here today and you have a bit of cake and bloody enjoy it without feeling guilty about it, we've had a great day. If you inspire somebody to have long, clear weeds, they will become a better person because they've got long, clear weeds. That's all I'm asking. And people say, and people ask me as fan today, why, why, why are you going to remain a dental? Why are you going, what are you doing? Because we all have a responsibility in our world to make our world a little bit better in some way. And what you do every day makes a really big difference to something like that. If somebody says to you, how are you? And you say, no, do you know? They're going to hear that from a hundred other people today. But if you say, hey, it's Sunday, Friday. How do you think I am? But even better, it's magical day Monday. How do you think I am? See, that tiny thing could make a massive difference to one person. And you don't know what that difference to that one person will make. And you might never hear about it. But one day, someone might tap you on the shoulder in the supermarket and say, oh, I've got more clear weeds because of you. <laughs> and those are things that really make my day. And I'm not asking you to, uh, if my day is irrelevant to you. What I'm asking you to do is wake up in the morning with your eyes flutter open and ask yourself this question. Where can I add value today? And at the end of the day, ask yourself, what did I do today to add massive value to my world? Which is a completely different focus to, oh, look at me on that. It's going to be a long day. It is, going to be 24. <laughs> thank you for having me, and most importantly, thank you for being dentists and being involved with the teeth. Because you've got it so right. I want to finish with this. If my profession could do what you guys have done, the world would be healthy, fit, and strong. You have made the process of having healthy teeth so simple and so easy and so much fun. Going to the dentist now is not the trauma that it used to be. So because of you, and we asked you this question before, when you don't brush your teeth, how do you feel? When you have crappy teeth, how do you feel? You don't want to smile, do you? Because you've got crappy teeth. I have so many people I say, well, we need to have your photo on your business card so people remember you because they don't remember your name, but they will remember your face. You know what the number one reason why people don't put their, their photo on their business card? Because you have to smile, don't you? Oh, I can't smile, the terrible thing. And you can't smile with your mouth closed. So I'll just give them your card. <laughs> so thank you for what you do every day. And um, that's from my heart to yours because sometimes I think you might wake up in the morning and think you're just going to work. Have you ever had that experience where somebody has come in with really horrible teeth and they've left with really nice teeth? Yes. How'd that make you feel? Yes. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank you.